when I'm with you Just can't stop getting closer to you With my mind now renew And conform to the image of you There's a peace running deep from my soul That I'm a child of a king And I'm sorry I just can't walk the way I used to Say the things I used to do I just can't do them no more There's a peace running deep from my soul Ready? Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Miracle Open Bible Church, Bible study. And we'll be focusing on managing grief, handling grief. And our text is taken from 2 Samuel 18, verses 33 to 19, verses 1 to 7. And it goes as thus. And the king was much moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And he went and thus he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would God I had died for thee, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. And it was told Joab, behold, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom. And the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people. For the people heard, saying, That day how the king was grieved for his son. And the people got them by the steed that day into the city, as people being ashamed steal away when they flee in battle. But the king covered his face, and the king cried with a loud voice, O oh, my son Absalom, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son. And Joab came unto the house of the king and said, 
Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants, which this day have saved thy life and the life of thy sons and of thy daughters and the lives of thy wives and the lives of thy concubines. Verse 7 says, Now therefore arise, go forth and speak comfortable unto thy servants. For I swear by the Lord, if thou wilt not go forth, there will not tarry anyone with thee. And I stop there. The main text is really, is really 2 Samuel 19 verses, verses 2 where it says, And the whole army, the victory that day was turned into mourning. Because on that day the troops heard it said, The king is grieving for his son. The king is grieving for his son. Grief is our reality in this time, particularly as we go through a pandemic. What is grief? Grief, according to the APA dictionary, is defined as thus. It is the anguish, the anguish experience. In other words, it is the agonizing physical and mental distress. So grief is anguish experienced after significant loss, usually the death of a loved one or a beloved person. This is how Gary Collins defined grief. He says grief is an important normal response to the loss of any significant object or any significant person. So grief again is important. It is the response to the loss of someone or something significant. He says that it is an experience of deprivation and anxiety which can show itself physically, emotionally, cognitively, socially, and spiritually. And this was what David, the king of Israel, was feeling when he lost his son. As the scripture says, the king is grieving for the loss of his son, Absalom. Now, according to Gary Collins, any loss can bring about grief. Any loss can bring about grief. So for example, a divorce can bring about grief, he says. The retirement from one's job can cause one to grieve. Losing a leg or some parts of our body can lead to grief. The death of a pet, a person, or even a plant. The departure of a child to college can cause their parent to grieve as they face the empty nest scenario selling one's car that is so beloved to them can also lead to grief he says and also health failures that those are some of the examples of loss that leads to grief but what does the bible say about grief and we look at a few scriptures what does the bible say about grief matthew chapter 4 verse 14 says blessed Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Isaiah 53 verse 14, it says, Jesus, or rather he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. A few other examples of persons who experienced grief, and the scripture speaks of it, is Jacob, who grieved for his son. And I find that reference in Genesis 37, 34 to 36. We also have Absalom, who died, and his father grieved for him, that we read of in 2 Daniel, 2 Samuel 18, 33 to 19. David also grieved the loss of another son, Bathsheba's son, found in 2 Samuel 12, verses 16 to 20. And we have Eli, who grieved for the loss of his son. His sons were killed 
and his daughter-in-law also grieved for her husband. And we'll look a few at those references as we go through the text. So those are some scriptural examples of grief that the Bible gives of how persons react when they heard or got the news that someone died for them. Phases of grief. Phases of grief. Phases of grief. Now there are different phases of grief. When we experience loss, we go through a number of stages, as one person may put it. Or there are some phases that we go through and experience. Phases of grief. Now, grief, one of the phases is shock and numbness and this is suggested by Colin Murray Parks who developed the theory Bowlby theory of attachment he says that shock and numbness is one of the phases of grief and this is what we realize that Eli and his daughter-in-law experienced when they heard the loss of their son and of his son and her husband that's first samuel chapter 4 verses 18 to 21 and i'll read it first samuel chapter 4 verses 18 to 21 and it reads as thus who eli who was 98 years old and whose eyes had failed so that he could not see he told eli I have just come from the battle line. I fled from it this very day. And Eli asked, what happened, my son? The man who brought the news replied, Israel fled before the Philistines and the army suffered heavy loss. Also two of your sons, Hophni and Phinehas are dead and the ark of God has been captured. When Eli heard that it was mentioned that the ark of god had been captured he fell backward off his chair by the side of the gate talking about shock and numbness shock and numbness is a phase that persons may experience when they are informed about the loss of a loved one he says, loss in this phase feels impossible to accept. And that is why it is important that when we are going to advise somebody or tell them that someone important and significant to them has passed, we have to be careful when and how we do it. As we see in this particular text, he like got the news and I believe that it was shock that caused him to fall off the chair and himself died. The daughter-in-law got the news in this particular text that her husband, he lies two sons, her husband died also and the ark was taken and this shock drove her into labor as she was a pregnant woman. So we have to be careful and be mindful when we are going to, to advise somebody about the loss of a loved one. In this particular phase, the person may feel that the news that they got is just impossible and is so difficult to accept. This is according to the help guide. And Park suggests that there are physical distresses that persons will experience in this phase. The second phase is that of yearning and searching. Yearning and searching. You see, we may try to do so by reliving memories. So the yearning for the loved one, searching for the loved one. So we try to relive, he says, the memories through 
going through pictures, by looking for signs for the person we feel connected to, yearning and searching. And this can be, this was depicted, I believe, in 2 Samuel 19, verses 4, where the scripture says, David just kept saying, Oh, my son Absalom, my son Absalom, that yearning and that searching for his lost loved one. The other phase of grief is that of despair, despair and disorganization. And it says we may find ourselves questioning and feeling angry in this phase. And I believe a good illustration of this despair and disorganization is the example given in the scripture in John 11 verse 21 or rather 19 to 21 where it speaks about Mary when Mary Mary's response to the death of Lazarus when Mary heard that Jesus Christ was on his way or Jesus Christ was there Mary's response she did immediately arise and went to Jesus the scripture says she stayed at home while Martha, when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. So in verse 20 of John 11, Martha was the one who rose up and went to meet Jesus while Mary stayed at home. It could be that Mary stayed at home there because she was depressed. She was extremely sad. She was, according to this phase, dis in despair and disoriented or disorganized. That is a next phase. He says, the realization that our loved one is not returning feels real at this stage. When we move to despair and disorganization, it is the realization, the reality that our loved one is no longer returning. And that realization becomes, it becomes real. We know, we know are aware of it. And then the person have a difficult time understanding or finding hope in future. The next phase after the shock and numbness, the yearning and searching for the person, the despair and disorganization is that of reorganization and recovery reorganization and recovery. And that is when you, we actually accept that yes, Mama gone, dada gone, my son is no longer around in the case of, of, of David. So when David, in another text of 2 Samuel chapter 12, when David realized that his son, that is the one that Uriah's wife had for him, had died after all the fasting and prayer, his son still died. The realization, the reorganization, the recovery was that he got up, and he started to have his meal again. He started to eat again. He went back to, to, to a level of normalcy, reorganization and recovery. And those are the phases. Now, there are stages of grief that I would like, us, like to mention, just to briefly mention, apart from this theory of attachment according to Bowlby and it is that the stage of denial when someone get the news that a loved one has passed one stage is denial where you, we just deny it we can't believe that this has happened some persons may go through a stage of anger where we feel angry angry perhaps at the situation angry maybe at God, if you look at John chapter 1, verse 21, Mary said, Jesus, when, she re when her brother died and she approached Jesus, she said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Sometimes anger may set in. Sometimes bargaining. We try to bargain with God or we try to bargain with life circumstances. Lord, if you just work a miracle. If you just intervene and do this for me, then I would be able to carry on. We bargain with God. And then there's the other stage, not just denial, anger, bargaining, but that of depression. 
where we fall into depression because of the grief. And the final stage is that of acceptance. We accept that, yes, this has happened. So grief is not an easy thing to bear and to go through. There are different types of grief. We have anticipatory grief. And this, I believe, was what David went through in 2 Samuel 12, verse 16 to 20. And this marks the story of he and Uriah's wife's son. When God said, this child is going to die. The child got sick. And God said, the child is going to die. And this was what David did, recorded in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 16 to 20. Verse 16 says, David pleaded with God for the child. And he fasted and spent the nights lying in sackcloth on the ground. The elders of his household stood beside him to get him up from the ground. But he refused and he did not eat any food with them talking about grief anticipatory grief so in other words anticipatory grief is when someone is ill and it is life-threatening the person is ill the person may have cancer a, a life-threatening disease and the the, the the verdict the doctor may have given was that the the person will not make it anticipatory grief is that we start grieving before the person has passed. We, we, we start grieving the loss of the person before they, they have passed, before they die. That is anticipatory grief. And this is how one writer defines it. He says it's defined as grief that occurs before death. In contrast to grief after death. So rather than death, alone this type of grief has many losses so there are many losses associated with this grief loss of companionship so even while the person is ill that companionship that you would have had perhaps if it's a spouse or a parent you would have that person around for dinner you would have that person going out on various outings with you so there's the loss of companionship so anticipatory grief is is it, 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 not only grieving the possible loss of the person, but the loss of other things associated with the presence of the person. Person grieve the loss of changing roles in the family. So when a person is ill, it could be the breadwinner. Now there's a change in role and the persons, the family go through that grieving process, anticipatory grief. And I believe this was what? David faced when God said to him the son that is ill is going to die so he stopped eating went on fasting to plea with God as he go through this particular grief another type of grief that we all are aware of is the normal grief normal grief and normal grief Gary Collins described as a process which runs through reasonable consistent course and leads eventually to a restoration of mental and physical well-being normal grief so in 2nd Samuel 12 verses 16 to 20 onwards it also records that when David realized that the child died he got up he got around his table and the scripture said he had his meal. So in other words, the anticipatory grief had prepared him for the, the actual reality of the, the death of his son. So grief was now normal. Another type of grief is complicated grief. And this grief is intensified. It is described as delayed, prolonged grief. Intensified, delayed prolonged grief so in other words when it comes to normal grief we may give persons there's no set time how a person may grieve but we may say well after a few months then the person should be able to recover after a year or so but when we find that 
period of time has passed and grieving still continues, then that is what is classified as intense, prolonged and delayed grief. Intense, prolonged and delayed grief. And this, I believe, is reflected in Genesis chapter 37 when, when Jacob heard got the news, realized that his son, according to his brothers, Joseph, was dead. And this is, is Jacob's response. Genesis 37, verse 34 to 36. And it reads as thus. He recognized it and said, is, It is my son's robe. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but Jacob refused to be comforted. Jacob refused to be comforted. No, he said, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave so his father wept for him talking about complicated grief this grief is is a grief that 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 continues there should be a time where a person recovers a time where a person come back to themselves and start to live and learn to live without that particular loved one but jacob said i will continue to grieve until I join my son in the grave. And when persons continue to grieve for a long period of time, when it is even more intensified and prolonged, that is complicated grief. So you have normal grief, complicated grief, and anticipatory grief. Grief. The Bible says, blessed are they, those who mourn they shall be comforted. What are the common effects? What are the common effects of grief? There are some common effects and that we see depicted in the text. Common effects of grief, according to Collins, is one crying. Crying. The scripture says as that we read in Genesis 37, 34, that Jacob wept and he wept. When you look at 2 Samuel 19 verse 4, the scripture said that David wept for his son and he said, Oh, my son Absalom, my son Absalom. He wept and he wept and wept extremely. So one of the common effects of grief is that of crying. You see, crying, according to Collins, expresses deep feelings and it releases tension crying expresses deep feelings and it releases tension so it is okay for those who have lost a loved one who have lost someone dear to you or lost something dear to you it is okay to cry to shed tears to weep to bawl even like David, because crying expresses, is an expression of our deep feelings and it releases tension. So that's one of the common effects of grief. Another one is restlessness. Restlessness, just not being able to sleep, not being able to sleep well, it, sleep disturbances. That is a common effect also of grief. And another one is depression. And I believe perhaps Mary, when she, she lost her brother Lazarus in John chapter 11, verse 19 to 21, I believe she may have gone through a period of depression. But the scripture says, when Jesus came, this is the person now who is a miracle worker. This is the person who the scripture described as them loving. When Jesus came, Martha rose up and went to meet Jesus. But Mary, the scripture says, she, she stayed home. She didn't move. She didn't budge at the news as quickly as our Martha budged at the news. John chapter 11, 
19 to 20. So I believe that Mary may have gone through a period of depression, like many others who have lost a loved one. They may have gone through a period of depression, extreme sadness and despair. Those are, these are some of the effects of grief. There are other symptoms of grief, physical symptoms, which may include headaches, shortness of breath, loss of appetite. For example, David, when he realized or got the news that his son was going to die, he immediately abstained from food and went into fasting. But you have some persons who will lose appetite, just can't eat, can't drink. Loss of appetite. Some persons may increase their appetite may increase, so they may start eating more than usual. Some may experience anxiety and feelings of inner emptiness. Just the com common effects of grief. Then there are other issues associated with grief. With grief, a person may withdraw. So, so there may be times when a, a loved one dies and persons come to visit, but you don't want to see anybody. You just want to be alone. A, a, a sense of withdrawal. You may experience forgetfulness. Yes, you go to work. Yes, you are still active in the house, but just can't keep, just keep forgetting things. Forgetfulness. The person may experience a decline in interest of intimacy with their spouse. They may experience nightmares or, or errors in judgment or just being disorganized in routine. So for example, your routine was up in the morning, do your devotions, get the kids ready to go to school or whatever activities. That may have been the routine, but no, because of the loss of a loved one, someone dear to you, there's a disorganization in your routine. Those are some of the common effects of grief. What are the coping strategies? We look at the text in 2 Samuel chapter 18. And this was, was, was David's response. All he did was that he wept and he wailed. And he says, oh, my son, Absalom, my son, Absalom. And the scripture says in verse 2, the king grieved for his son. Verses 4 says, and the king covered his face. And the king cried with a loud voice. Oh, my son, Absalom, my son, Absalom. And if you can remember and reflect at verse 33 of chapter 18, the scripture says, the king says, I, oh God, I would have died for thee. He would have died for his son. And this was how he felt. How do we cope with grief? How do we cope when we get the news, that sad news that a loved one had passed. How do we cope? What are the coping strategies? Jacob, in the text in Genesis 37, his response was similar to David where he cried and he wept. And he says, I will grieve and mourn for my son till the day I die. How do we cope with, these, the, with grief? How do we cope with the loss of a loved one? You had Eli... Eli did not get a time to grieve. The scripture says that Eli at the news of the loss of his sons, he himself, based on the shock of it, fell down and died. The, 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 the wife of one of his sons who was pregnant at the shock of the news, she immediately went into labor. How do we respond and react and cope with grief, cope with that bad news. And this is the coping strategy according to the APA. It says, one, talk about the death of your loved one. Talk about the death of your loved one with friends. Talk about the death of your loved one with a colleague in order to help you understand what had happened and remember your friend and family member. So start talking. Some persons may be viewing me at this time. You have lost somebody and you're just not talking. Just maybe have crying spells, not talking. But 
it is okay to talk about that particular loved one. We encourage you to talk about the loved one. Talk about the child. Talk about your dad. Talk about your mom, your cousin, your brother. Whoever it is, talk about them. Then secondly, accept your feelings. How are you feeling? Are you feeling angry? Are you feeling depressed? Are you feeling sad? As old Mary felt sad. Are you feeling... How are you feeling? Accept your feelings. And this is what it says. You may experience a wide range of emotions, of sadness, anger, as I said before. Even exhaustion, just feeling tired. But accept your feelings. All of these are normal. And it's important to recognize when you are feeling this way. So if you feel stuck or overwhelmed by these emotions, it may be helpful to talk to somebody, but accept those feelings. And secondly, after you have talked about, after you, you know, you make it a regular, a regular routine to talk about the loved one at this point in time and to accept your feelings, take care of yourself, which is very key take care of yourself eat healthy exercise as yes they recommend and get plenty of sleep as you face and deal with this grief that is one of the coping strategies take care of yourself eat healthy get plenty of sleep and fourthly reach out and help others with the loss remember yes you are grieving yes you have lost someone and if it's somebody within your family there are other persons who are experiencing that loss other persons who are experiencing that loss so remember that there are other persons who are grieving so for the, the example in the case of of king david when he lost his son his grief was so intense his grief was so prolonged his grief was such that all the other persons appear as if they were not of importance to him at all. So in our grieving, we have to remember that there are others who are also grieving. Let it not be that you were, our grief caused perhaps a child to feel as if, well, maybe mommy would have preferred if it was me. Sometimes that happens. So reach out also. Remember, if it's a father who has passed, if it's a husband who has passed, remember the child as well. Reach out and help others dealing with the grief. It says, spend time with loved ones. Spend time with loved ones. And this can help you cope as well as help the family members cope. It says, whenever it's... Whenever whether it's sharing stories. So when you spend time with your loved one, you can share the story of the person who had passed. Share stories. Listen to your loved one's favorite music. And these little small things can make a different coping strategies. How do we cope when we have lost a loved one? And finally, remember and celebrate the life of your loved one. Anniversaries of a lost loved one can be difficult. So when the birthdays come around, when the anniversaries come around, you know, it can be difficult. But celebrate the life of your loved one is recommended. Celebrate the life of your loved one. What can we do? How can we help others who have lost someone in this time? How can we help? And this is what Gary Culling says. He says, encourage discussion about death before it occurs he so if someone a family member is about to die or a family member has been given up by the doctors then it, this is the time it is said that person should encourage discussion so if it's a pastor see how prepared persons are for this particular discussion. Secondly, he says, be present and available. How can we help persons who 
have lost someone. We need to be present and available. Sometimes just our presence, just a visit, just a call can make a difference. And it says, make it known that feelings, expression of feelings is good and acceptable. Grief is our reality in this time. Mourning is what many are facing in this time. The Bible says, blessed are they who mourn for they shall be comforted. Isaiah 54, 14 says, 53, 14 says, He hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Grief and mourning is something that Jacob knew as he grieved for his son. It's something that David knew as he grieved for his son. It's something that Mary was aware of as she grieved for her brother. Grief is a part of our reality especially in this time but i want to close with what revelations verse 1 21 verse 1 and 4 says revelation 21 verse 1 and 4 says then i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea he will wipe away every tear from their eyes there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the older order of things has passed away father we just want to bless you this evening and we thank you for your word we thank you lord that you are with us as we go through this difficult time and Lord, we pray for each and every person who are grieving at this time. Perhaps some, Father, are experiencing normal grief. Some are going through anticipatory grief. Some, Lord God Almighty, are going through complicated grief where the loss had taken place for years. But like what Jacob said, that he would continue to grieve until the day he died. You have some persons, oh God, who are still grieving going through intense grief lord god father we commit each person before you and we pray god that you bring comfort we pray god that you bring each person to a point of reality lord god and hope in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we pray god that for added grace and strength as they go through this difficult time lord god give them the courage they need give them the support they need father in Jesus' name father we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name we pray amen and amen the lord bless you Oh, oh, oh. Must be ready. 
evidence that I'm a child of a king. And I'm sorry, I just can't walk the way I used to. Said the things I used to do, I just can't do them no more. There's a peace running deep. From us all, there's a peace in my soul when I'm with you. There's a peace in my soul. 